Okay, Christina Merkley here, another one of the free recorded sessions, and Tatum has found her way to me. <laughs> Hello, that welcome. Yes, Hello. yes, we had a little preamble about that, so uh, kind of aware of graphic recording, the notes on the side when you're doing group work, and uh, aware of coaching, and uh, another coach who either got trained by me or is aware of this, through her or him, you found your way here. And I also know that um, you know, there's quite a library of sessions that are accumulating and you found your one your way to the one with Jackie and Jackie was yes. um, we really focused on her job loss so she had lost her job and then was in that process of finding a new one and beautifully found one uh, on the heels of doing what was called a wouldn't it be nice if map with me so, right. so that's kind of, as much as I've got I know you've got a beautiful uh, one-year-old puppy in the background so we'll, <laughs> we'll hear hopefully my up. Yeah. yeah, my partner's trying to entertain him as we go through this session. So hopefully, yeah. I love dogs. <laughs> I love dogs. So don't worry yeah. about it if there's any barking. That's totally fine. <laughs> so give yeah. me a little context, however you want to enter into it. We, we may end up doing that same one you saw, or we, we may go for another tool. So I'll just see as we sure. discuss things. So Unlike Jackie, I, I'm fortunate that I am still employed mm. uh, during COVID. I've worked in higher education now for six years. So I work at a large university. Um, I started my career in residence life where I was living and working on campus. And in the last year and a half, I've been working in development and alumni relations. And prior to joining doing higher education. Um, my first real job was driving the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile around the country. <laughs> I did That's amazing. <laughs> experiment, experiential marketing. Mm. And I've always said like, you know, I, I had my dream job at 23 and now here I am trying to find my way to mm. what is to be another, another dream job. So I'm not really enjoying my work. I'm also a, a PhD student, so I'm studying mm. organization development. Oh, cool. yeah. And it's great to be employed by my university because I get a very great tuition discount. Mm. Um, but I often question if that is, if I'm holding myself back by continuing to work at the university because of that benefit mm. or if I should let that go and work my way towards a role that I see myself doing in the future, because I don't have any, let's say, tangible OD experience other than what mm -hmm. I have been learning in my education. So I'm kind of at this crossroads of I'm so lucky to still have this position. I'm lucky to have this tuition benefit, but could I move into the corporate world where there might also be some sort of educational benefit? What are the barriers that are holding me back from making that leap? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, good. I'm just taking a little bit of notes. I'll flash them on the sure. screen Nate, right now. Just sometimes in the little preamble here, some things show themselves. So let me just flip my screen on and I'll go over what I've, nothing fancy, I've just, just some notes, just a little list here. Okay, here we go. So we've got the large university and the, a little bit of the golden handcuffs going on with the tuition discount. Mm -hmm. um, so development, alumni relations, exper experiential marketing in the past, right? And that dream job yes. early on, pros and cons of hitting it good at the beginning. Yeah, right? Like I, yeah. I, I lived life to the fullest for two years with traveling in those types of roles. Um, But it's nice to keep my clothes in a closet now rather than mm -hmm. a suitcase and, mm -hmm. and have a puppy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can relate to all of that. Yeah, funny enough, my uh, master's, not a PhD, just a master's, but is in organizational development. And, awesome. and I got mine at like, well, I think I was about 30 when I completed it. So I was in my late 20s. 
um, I did spend a couple of years in politics and then went into that, but I, I can relate to what you're saying because when I came out at that age with a degree in organizational development with no real experience in organizational development, mm -hmm. right? And most people are doing ID, OD, at least at that time, that's quite some time ago, but um, we're independent consultants. So there's no way with a yes. lack of experience like that, I was gonna turn around and be a consultant. My particular solution, uh, not that I consciously made that happen, but it's what unfolded was getting into graphic recording, which we, funny enough, was, we're speaking about, right? So, yeah, we are. Yeah, mm -hmm. so taking those notes on the side got me in the rooms with other people who are doing different kinds of OD and change management um, interventions in various ways. So, so I and it's it's a tricky thing. There must be something that you're resonating with, having chosen that out of probably all your different options. So, what was it about OD that attracted you? So what initially led me to OD was appreciative inquiry, mm -hmm. if you are familiar with that process, which likely if you have a, a degree Very in OD, then mm -hmm. yes. Yep. I, I, I literally did a Google search of appreciative inquiry at my university, and that's what popped up was this degree program. Mm. Um, and I, like I said, worked in residence life and I was seeing a lot of things in that role where there wasn't really a lot of employee engagement. There really wasn't a lot of support for those of us that were live on staff members that were doing a lot of the tough stuff with, um, you know, transporting students to the hospital that had had too much alcohol, working with students that were experiencing suicidal ideation. Mm -hmm. It was just because I'm at such a large institution, the volume was so great. Mm -hmm. And it was just you moved from one student to the other. And so in time, I became a bit jaded with that work, which is what led me to my current role and that's what led me to OD is how can organizations do better to support not just those that might be entry level, but to just support their employees through their work. So I'm definitely interested in like employee engagement, the health and wellness side of things looking at things through an appreciative lens mm -hmm. and ultimately maybe continuing to work in higher education as like a director of OD um, employee engagement on the it would be on the HR side of things because we all know higher education is very structured and <laughs> has a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and often OD will be, that's where they plunk it, is in HR. Yes, exactly. Sometimes it's up at more of the strategic levels, but often it'll find its way there. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Great. <laughs> Feeling where to go. One way is to bop you out into the future and go meet your future self and see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> And have her and her have her guide you because she's been here at this crossroads that you're standing at. Right. 2020. So we can certainly do if that. If you're familiar with um, like Strengths Finder and Strengths mm, Quest, mm -hmm. one of my strengths is futuristic. Ah, cool. Which I think is what leads me to to struggle so much in this moment is that I just like want to know what's next and I want to mm -hmm. get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that would kind of be a a yes, and uh, since you're wired that way, having you hooked up to your future self, it doesn't have to just be a one-time opportunity. When I introduce you to her, she becomes an ongoing ally. So kind of perfect for a futurist to get hooked up with her future self. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, let me just see. There's, see what other options would be. The other option is to do inquiry, which is just meeting your consciousness, because as you say that you prefer to be in the future, it can also be helpful to show you how being in the present can be very useful and powerful. 
it doesn't mean that it exempts you from the future either. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's a way of meeting the now. And if you do have different kinds of questions, which I'm hearing in here, what's next, right? Um, yes. And the, what do I do with this OD? And I loved that stuff back there with the experiential marketing. Sometimes when we go into this inquiry approach, all those various things get addressed through the power of your consciousness, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's been tracking this whole conversation, right? My language for it is your right brain, is your left brain that's operating sure. in a certain way, but your right brain, your subconscious is tapped in at a much you know, bigger side of things. So it, that's a kind of shorthand way. And I often will do inquiry if I only have limited time, which I do with the person. So as I lay that, I know you're not going to know it left brain wise potentially, um, but uh, your right brain may have a sense here. So do you have any sense of, as I say, future self or inquiry as options? Any of those kind of tingle or jump out at you more? One over the other? I think inquiry jumps out more um, just because I kind of have a vision for what that future self will be, but I'm stuck in the middle. Yeah. Well, the future self can often tell you how she got there, which makes the, okay. makes the middle more, you know, the strategic side of it. Bridging sure. The gap. Yeah. If, if you're feeling more called to that approach, then let's do it. <laughs> necessarily. I was curious. I thought that was interesting that you said inquiry and I trust that. So um, I'm just going to draw the gap here. So great. So here you're here and you're the futurist. So you know your future self to some extent here. Going out there, it may be what you think it is or it may be a little right. different. So that sometimes has surprises to it. And then it's this, right? The bridging between these two, which is the big kind of what's next for you. Mm -hmm. I'm working with a woman right now who's in uh, grad school too. And just at that kind of final phase of things. And then what the heck do I do once I graduate? Right. I, I think I was, well, I don't want to say lucky. I, my master's is in business. So I was getting my MBA mm. Mm. and had, the opportunity to be a live-in residence life um, mm. graduate student. And then I was introduced to some of the student affairs staff where I was getting my degree. And they are like, well, you know that this is a career path to work in higher education. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had never really thought of it in that way. I was in a sorority and I was like, oh, this could be fun to live in this residence hall and plan programs. And that's how I found my way to, to higher ed. But had that not happened, I would have been in that same position of like, what do I do with this mm -hmm. business degree? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I feel like I know what I want to do with my PhD three to four years down the mm. line. But are there things that I can be doing between now and then other than sitting in this current position? Okay. Um, and then tell me a bit about the future self. So what is, what do you know? So you, you know what you want to do with that degree. So tell me about that. Is it this list that I've already heard with the supporting employees, engagement, health and wellness, HR? Yeah, I, I yeah. certainly think like in an ideal world with my career that, that that's what I would be doing. Yeah. Um, I haven't really narrowed it down to like an industry, for example. And mm -hmm. I would also love, my program has a master's, an online master's degree program in OD and change. Mm -hmm. And there's an appreciative inquiry class, of course. And I'd love to like teach that as an adjunct. Um, I don't want mm. to be a full-time faculty member just because the future of higher education is so mm -hmm. um, unknown, especially with what COVID has shown us with the ability to do remote learning and mm -hmm. brick and mortar changing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yes, an industry would be higher ed, but that's all I've ever known. So I'm not sure if that's why 
that's what I'm picking. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because it's comfortable. Yeah. It's the only thing you, you're, you know how to fill it into. Okay. But you, I'm also hearing the essence of teaching. Maybe not full time and in the traditional way that you're surrounded with now, but the, es the essence of teaching is in there. And particularly, you like the OD and change. Mm hmm Yeah. Or combining training and development into mm -hmm. this role, because that's a facet of OD too. Yep. I mean, I do take time to like pull job descriptions and work my way through them and say like, okay, is this something I would want to do in the future? Um, but I'm just struggling in the present moment. <laughs> well, there's a great entry into inquiry, struggling in the present moment. <laughs> so let's go with that. Um, let me see how I want to structure my page here. I think I'm going to switch it over into brown over here and I'm going to put struggling in the present moment. I'll get this down and then I'll direct you as we shift into this. Okay. This is our entry point. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that came before this, leading into this and showing itself to go, yep, we're going to go into inquiry and see what happens here. Okay, so with the inquiry process, very similar to AI in a way, and we're just going to uh, appreciate the heck out of everything that emerges. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, and for the, the different, ad, this is working with your consciousness, right? The fuller aspect, the left brain might pop up, the mind, and um, we're going to thank it. Minds usually are quite fixated on doing an organization and that kind of stuff, right? So I can hear your mind in there going, what's gonna be next? Where's the checklist? It's jiggling Where's around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're just gonna go, hello mind, welcome mind, thank you mind, good idea. And you're not the full picture mind, right? And then the other, and different people language it and it arises in different ways. Um, the heart, you know, the body. Um, the larger consciousness. We'll see what happens with you. Sometimes it's the gut, right? It's, it's, a, it's a, a, an and to the mind, right? And it mm -hmm. makes it fuller. And often that's what's lacking, especially uh, for those of us who are in higher ed, ed kind of stuff. Our minds get really developed and the other side of us uh, atrophies a little bit. So we'll see what happens. Yes. Um, we're just gonna meet it all and it knows this dialogue and it knows the crossroads you're at and we'll see there may be some suggestions and some solutions and some direction for you. Okay, awesome. so the first thing is just um, as I direct you to this, it's going to be, it's going to be weird and hopefully some people find it entertaining and soothing, but I'll just kind of speak out, bark out <laughs> various um, commands in a way and okay. And as I throw these things out, some of them will land for you and some of them won't. So just go with the ones that land, right? Like, um, I have a sense of what will be going on in your consciousness, but as I throw these out, I'm just trying to calibrate. So, so just let me know what, which ones calibrate. Anything that doesn't, just let it dissipate. It just didn't land, that's okay, it just falls off, no big deal. Okay, so, right. so me struggling in the present. You can open your eyes, close your eyes, whatever feels comfortable for you. I'll be taking notes as we go along. But okay. um, let everything go and just center into your being and center into this feeling or thought, whatever it is, of I'm struggling in the present. There's this thing I gotta figure out. So right now I'm just, you know, doing my thing, which I identify as struggle. And wherever that is, it might be inside of you or somewhere outside of you in your field, just like do a little bow to it. Just like, hello, you're welcome, struggle. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You're a welcome here. Yes. And just see what happens as you meet it and you welcome it and you make it okay for it to be there. You're welcome here. Even if there's a part of you that's not welcome with it, right? Not welcoming. Right. Just allow the part of you that is welcoming to receive the struggle and see what happens as you meet struggle, as you meet this stuff going on in the now. There's definitely a, 
at first as you were talking through it, I'm like, yeah, like I'll meet it where it is. And then as I let it sit a little longer, I'm like, eh, there's a bit of resistance to this because I don't really, excellent. I excellent. don't really love it much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Excellent. So back to appreciative. Hello, resistance. You are welcome here. It's okay to resist and even good idea. Well done. We can understand that that resistance has some sort of wisdom going on about why this makes it uncomfortable, why it doesn't want to welcome struggle. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, when I'm thinking, and this is all in the, the context of work, I, I'm resisting just because my current experience just feels so like tedious and boring and like I'm just going through the motions of having tasks, doing the tasks, moving on um, without it feeling overly fulfilling. Like I'm just doing my job. Okay, very good. Oh, I was going to make that mine, but I'm not sure it is. I'm just going to erase the mine for now, and we're just going to welcome this wisdom. So out of resistance came some more information, which was it's not fulfilling. I'm going through the motions, and I'm just doing my job. So let's meet all of these individually. First one we're going to meet is it's not fulfilling. So just agree with that. You're right. You're right. It's not fulfilling. And then the next layer is, we're just going through the motions. Agree with it, you're right. We're just going through the emotions. And then third mm -hmm. one about, I'm just doing my job. Agree with it, you're right. We're just doing our job. It's right, there's nothing wrong with this resistance, it's right. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, so there's a little shift. Something happened there. What happened there? What do you notice? Well, I think, like, what's more deeply ingrained is if I think about, like, conversations I've had with my mother, where she's like, you show up to work, you do what you need to do. She's worked at the same company for 25 years. And the back and forth here is, like, I should... I should be okay with just doing that. Okay, but very good. That's what Papa is, not. mom. Yep. Okay. Very good. Uh, you should be okay with this. Okay. So now we're going to meet this layer. Hello, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I know. It's like, what was it? It's it Stein, Seinfeld. Hello. Was it Norman? Hello, Norman. I can't remember the name. I might have the name wrong. I think, yeah, I think it was Norman, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Now it's gonna, I'm going to wake up at night and remember what it was. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter, but hello. Okay, so, um, so consciousness has just flashed you, mother, and consciousness mm -hmm. has also flashed you, mother's messages right? So mm -hmm. mother, do mother does this, right? So mother's like, you know, just go to your job, make it happen. Don't complain, just do it. And that's what we do. You should be okay with it. So we're just going to welcome that. We're not going to, welcoming it doesn't make it right or make it wrong. It's just there, right? Sure. It's just arisen. So it's like, okay, good. You're right. Mother does say those things. Mother does live, live her, right, her life that way. You're right, you're right. To consciousness that's bringing this forward. Ah, so as you meet that understandable model of these things, then see what happens. I mean, my, what I believe to be the obvious response is that's not how I want to continue to live my life. Um, that might be fulfilling to her, but it's not 
to me and 25 years down the road, um, I don't want to feel that I just showed up to work every day. Mm-hmm. Okay. But there needs to be a, a deeper purpose for me. Yes, very good. Just gonna get this down, then we're gonna meet it. Okay, so the next layer that's unfolded, as you've met mother and her uh, messaging around, this is how we do it. It's not how I want to live. It's not how I want to do it. I don't want to just show up and I need a deeper purpose. So that aspect that's just arisen, agree with it. You're right. We don't like that. We like this instead. We like deeper purpose instead. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes to that. Yeah, that feels good. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. We agree. We disagree to that. We, We agree to this. You're right. You're right. Just see what happens from here. We're doing great. I, yeah, I certainly, as you were saying, like, that's not what we want. We want something deeper. That felt really good. But then the, the next question, mm-hmm. of course, back to the, the future self is, well, shoot, how do we, how do we get there? Good, good. <laughs> Now there's mind. How do we get there? All the way along, there's been think, 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 as you've been saying things. Uh, my spelling's off today. Okay, there we go. How do we get there? So now we're just going to agree with this. So how, how do we get there? I'm just going to draw a little head profile to indicate the mind. A little brain in there. Okay, now mind's showing up. Highly developed mind is a good thing. We need it. They help us cope, but sometimes they can go a little overboard. So just agree. Hello, mind. Mind, you are welcome here. Mind, I cherish you. Mind, I value you. You've gotten me through so far. I'm on the PhD track for Pete's sake. Thank you, mind. And mind is a valid question how do we get there? This is all nice, all this discussion about purpose. Thank you very much. But how do we get there? I want a plan, right? I want a task list. I want, right. a, I want clarity. I want it known, damn it, right? That's the way minds are. So just as I say all those things, just meet mind and just be gentle. Underneath minds are big hearts. Mm-hmm. And so this, is, this mind has been loving you. And it got set up probably way back when you told us a little bit about mom and your environment there. So it makes sense to survive and to thrive in that kind of environment that mind very wisely developed itself. So thank you mind for doing that. Thank you for having the love. I am saying this and you can internalize it inside Mm -hmm. you. It's just suggestions, but thank you for loving me. Thank you for helping me get here. Thank you for helping me survive and thrive. Well done. Yeah. And just see what happens. Even maybe even give it something like flowers or a kiss or something. (laughs) Some chocolate. Yeah. (laughs) Excellent. Okay. Mine. Here's here's your chocolate. Big old box of chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Take your choice. Yum, yum, yum. Here's your reward. We love you. Thank you. See what happens is you recognize it and you give it chocolate. Yeah, that's certainly, I I don't think I've ever, I mean, I've done a lot of like gratitude work, but Mm -hmm. not with the mind. Yeah. Um, so, so it's yeah. a new experience, right? Yeah, so, I'm like, yeah. ah. How's, what, uh, what happens? Is there a, like, what, what goes on as you give it chocolates? What's the next thing that arises? I, I haven't realized, I mean, you made the comment about like being on the PhD track and yes, like, my gosh, I've, I've done so many years of education. Um, oh which 
you know, back to my mother, my mother never finished college. She had me when she was really young. Mm. So just like she was 20 when she had me. So just this appreciation of, um, like my parents pushing me to succeed academically from when I was very young to me Mm. still having that desire to be a lifelong learner and my mind supporting that is really awesome like yeah yeah, (laughs) I've never I've never thought of it like I said about acknowledging what I've been able to do other than like you earn the degree that you hang on your wall Mm -hmm. I've never looked at it um, yeah much much bigger than that yeah wonderful and that's that's valid too so we want to recognize the degree right so having multiple degrees up on the wall like well done that's an aspect of it yay 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 And there might also be some unlived life, right? Some transfer from from mom, uh, in terms of not doing it her, you know, not actualizing that in her life. So you know that that sure. unlived part of her gets transferred to to child. Understandably, nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Handy thing to do. Out of love for sure. What else is coming up though is, um, like, when will when will it be enough? Like Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I complete my PhD. So I have yet another degree that I hang on my wall. Mm -hmm. Well, other than certificates or professional development that I can do moving forward, I've, I've maxed out uh when you think about the the formal (laughs) you think about the formal education system so when i'm thinking about this future career as well am i as i said i had this like dream job early on Mm -hmm. so am i seeking something that well, let's, let's, let's go back to the inquiry and see, because I think you're getting up into mind and you're doing your usual yeah. trying, to, trying to figure it out in the head. So we're going to go, nice try, nice try. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Rewind. Good job. That's awesome. Good. Thank you for doing your thing. And that, that's, as we know, we can kind of spin, right? So it's like, we've tried it, we tried it. We're not, this does not compute on this one. So, um, so we just kind of go back. So the last thing we left off, there was a lot to thank mine for. Um, the aha about the awesomeness of the mind and the love there and the appreciation for it and, and the lifelong learning. Then there was the, oh, I'm going to run out of diplomas. <laughs> uh, like, you know, that carrot, carrot that I'm going for, it's like I've gobbled up all the carrots. So, uh, so when will it be enough? So this is probably another side, not the mind side, but this other side is going, okay, when's it going to be enough with the mind stuff? So we're just going to bow to that. Hello, whichever aspect of self this is that's showing up yet to be named. Mm -hmm. You're welcome here. And you're right. Good question. Valid question. Just like the mind's like going to go, how do we get there? Now this part is like, when's it going to be enough with all the mind stuff? Yeah. And the diploma. So just meeting it, not making either of them wrong. They're both right. And just see what happens as you meet it, you welcome it, you agree with it, see what happens. I think with the the degree side of things, I think it's recognizing that once I do complete my PhD, uh, that doesn't mean that the the learning needs to stop. Okay. Yep. And know, knowing that I can still learn possibly through teaching and learning from my students. Because um, I had a moment thinking of like, okay, when the when the degree is done, that's that. So shifting 
how I very good yeah picture learning that it doesn't need to have a a certificate a, a piece of paper tied to it yep um it doesn't need to be an achievement like here's your here's your trophy millennial mm -hmm. <laughs> good yes thanks for participating <laughs> yeah 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 i don't need my little trophies attached to it good Okay, so there's a lot to welcome here, and this is wisdom. So first off, we want to just bow to the mind because the mind's getting a little nervous going, hey, I like learning. So I don't like this idea that learning's going to stop when I get the PhD. So we're going to go, you're right, you're right. Don't worry. We like learning too. Mm -hmm. And learning, and then this other side kind of flashed at you, hey, with teaching, you will learn from students. So learning does, hey, psst, left brain. Uh, if this doesn't just involve trophies. So there's other ways to learn and develop beyond, you know, the, the way that you've done it. So, so let's agree uh, with that more creative right brain side, like, oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that reframe. Yeah. We like that. That feels good. Yeah, good. That That's a good. sign. That feels good. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, we like feeling good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Excellent. See what unfolds from here as you meet all that. And you recognize it doesn't have to just be paper and trophies and stuff. Good. I mean, I think what's unfolding is that whatever I do choose to do in the future, that needs to be a component. And I think working in development and alumni relations, I've kind of gotten away from that, mm. that I don't get to have those conversations. And I don't want to say like with students as in undergraduate college students, but with others about what I'm learning or what they're learning or how we can learn and reflect on experiences together. Um. Okay, good. So I think you're getting more, more information on what this learning. First off, there's the, the, the loss in a way, right? That, that the current position doesn't afford you that. So there's some grief mm -hmm. and some recognition. So we would first want to meet that is, you're right, that, that we don't like that. That kind of sucks. We have been missing that. So good information there. Then the answer to that is this, you know, being around people and having this collaboration and having this flow back and forth. It may come in that form of uh, training and development, right? So, so it's like good information. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. We like that. That's a good idea. Anything else that you saw in there? There's that back and forth happening, kind of collaboration. Help me with the words. What was it? Collaboration. I think, yeah, collaborate reflection. I mentioned uh -huh. that. Yeah. Um. And you, you don't have it in the now, but you can envision having that in the training and development kind of future that's coming. So as you place yourself there to that plain, uh, training and development. Yeah, I guess when the conversation started, I didn't realize the 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 weight of the learning piece mm. um and like how important those types of interactions are for me yep and when you say those interactions tease it out a bit bit more what are those interactions what are you getting what's the wisdom what kind of interactions well oh gosh now it's all tying way back of i just like to have experiences with individuals or groups of people where they just share their stories mm. like and to either have them share their experiences whether that be what they're learning or like a story from you know childhood their life whatever it may be mm -hmm. or I've worked with a lot of undergraduate students that I've been with them when they've had these 
aha moments. Mm -hmm. Um, like with the Wienermobile, one of the coolest things was people that would come up to you that were really old and tell you, I remember when I was six years old that my grandmother brought me to see the mm. Wienermobile and we went mm. home, we made hot dogs and ate s'mores. Like yeah. that, that storytelling component that, you know, where do you find that in a, And what I aspire to be, like a director level, um, you know, HR, OD. Is it in the informal interactions or can it be formalized within a, a job? Okay, good. So let's not get too far ahead. Let's go back. And uh, it's unfolding beautifully. So the first thing that flashed at you was, hey, psst, we like groups and individuals. So we're gonna agree with that, yes, yes, yes. And hey, mm -hmm. more specifically, is I love the sharing of stories. I had shared multiple things in your past where there were these delicious storytelling moments and where aha came out. And I would even say kind of like nostalgia or emotion or love, right? Mm -hmm. um, with the, uh, the hot dog stories and the connection to their, their youth and their past, right? Like how, how beautiful sure. that's, that's um, so humane. So, um, you know, those would be my words, right? But we'll tease them out of you, but um, so yes, yes, yes to that aha moments and that humanity and uh, nostalgia and sharing and sweetness because your face just lit up as you were talking about it and envisioning those people would come up to you and how beautiful that was. And then rightly so mine goes, Oh, but wait a second, we're going to, we're going to be an OD director. So where the heck do we find that in being an OD director? So all that that proceeded is right. And then we'll say to mind, you know, good question, mine. Good question. Valid question. Let's just see what happens as you agree with mine and see what flashes next from your brilliant consciousness. I mean, I think this is coming from the mind again, because it's answering the question, but I That's think okay. it's found, mm -hmm. it's found in the, the culture and finding my ah, way to a very good, finding my way to a company where that's embedded in the culture or where I'm part of creating that culture. And I also think that that's something that uh, isn't, is lacking from mm -hmm. my, my current role is even mm -hmm. though I'm responsible for connecting with our alumni um, and some of that storytelling sharing happens, it's not, It's short. It's one off. Yeah. Okay. And not, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. So agree, agree. Like, oh, good. Whether it's mine or this other aspect, they're both right. That organizational culture is a clue. Whether it's already existing or you help build it, culture is key. And just bow mm -hmm. to that and say, thank you. You're right. You're right. We like that. We like one that has it. We're, we're in one right now that doesn't. We don't like that. We agree with you. And we'd like one that has it, whether it can be built where we are, or we go somewhere that, where there already is there, or we go somewhere else and build it. However, give me some culture, right? That supports this storytelling mm -hmm. and this authentic human connection. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, I like that. Authentic human connection. Okay. Beautiful. I just got goosebumps as you connected <laughs> I like that. that a lot. Yeah. So authentic human connection. Yes, please. We bow to that. We like that. Good idea. Okay. And then just see what happens. What unfolds next from consciousness. I mean, what's unfolding is that 
that is something that I haven't been focusing on. And I think in this remote work environment, it's been very, even more difficult. Um, so. Disagree with that. You're right. We haven't been yeah. focusing on that and it's harder, harder, uh, in the current times. And, and th that's absolutely right. You're right. You're right. Just see what happens as you agree. Yeah. As I agree, then I find myself using the current times as an excuse mm -hmm. for <laughs> just mm -hmm. forward on myself. <laughs> that's why. Um, like, oh, well, we shouldn't be excusing this virtual remote environment as th the reason why. Um, well, I meet that and agree with it. Um, that it's kind of a split, right? So, so it's kind of, um, it's a little mean. So, um, but there is, um, it's right, right? Like it's, you're right. We don't want to use it as an excuse. Good mm -hmm. idea. We don't want it to, we don't also want to be mean and nasty to us because we're talking about authentic human connection here. So we want to, you know, right. be, be kind to ourselves too while we're in this time where we may or may not be using it as an excuse. Okay, so you're just meeting all that. So just see what happens. You can make both sides of that able to exist and okay. Yeah. And what what's coming from this is that my current role is not the place where I, I want to focus my energy on this authentic human connection, that it's, although that's an aspect of the work that I do, I need to seek other opportunities for that connection. Um, and focus my energy there because just doing it in my current role would not be a good use of my my energy to be quite honest okay very good information you just got from consciousness clarifying right you entered this needing some clarity so it just gave you some clarity so be sure to recognize it and thank it you're right you're right thank you thank you thank you not in this current role. And the guidance is to focus on other opportunities. See what happens as you meet that. I'm thinking of the, uh, the Funky Town song, the like, gotta move on. I don't know if you know, yeah, I'm a terrible that's, singer. That's good. Like, yeah. Like the disco, like do, 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 do. And I think that's what they say, or time to move on, or gotta move on, or something like that. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, excellent. So, so there's right brain. Right brain communicates often in music that's and songs. Yes. It's, it's just a wonderful metaphor, right? So it's playing you. That's your theme song. <laughs> Gotta move on. I've had yeah. I've had these music moments. Like I uh was on a meditation retreat and doing a walking meditation mm. and I have this music moment mm -hmm. and it's wild. Yes, to me yes. yes. I... It is wild and it's awesome. And they're very poignant and strong. So it's cool. You've had one before and now you're having one right here. Here's your yeah, music, whoa. Moment. <laughs> music moment. Go download that song and get it on your phone. <laughs> yeah. And just Dance bow to that. The house. Yeah, 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 exactly. Bow to that as your theme song. I got to move on. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Good idea. <laughs> just see what unfolds from here. And I think what's unfolding is what I already knew and that I, I need to start exploring other opportunities, whether it feels like I just need to let go of the safety net and trust that should something else surface, that I can figure out, let's say like the tuition piece 
um, later on because I I'm well, very let's, let's take it first but meet all it's saying is exploring it's not telling you to jump <laughs> ship it's not telling you to do you know there are days where I want to free tuition. <laughs> I get it I get it so, <laughs> so so when exploring showed itself consciousness the mind kicked in right so the mind was like oh wait a second uh if you're gonna do that because it's like so let's just tone that down go to exploring first and meet exploring because it's saying try to start exploring you already knew it but now it's on even clearer here so just a little bow you're right you're right it's time to start exploring and then trust came up right there's rapid fire because the 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 mind there threw out its thing and then it said trust and then it said, what about the money intuition? And then it said, we can figure it out, right? So it's like, it's okay, mind, just bow. And it's mind's wise. So mind's tracking all these practicalities. So thank oh, you, yeah. thank you, mind. Thank you for being practical. Okay, yes. Thank you for looking after me. Thank you for looking at the bottom line, right? Like wise, wise, wise. Thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. I can always count on you. You drive me a little nuts, but I can always count on you right? So just, it's a huge honor you want to give the mind because it, again, it loves you and looks after you. Yeah, right? it's rooted for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's even do that with rooted. Have it come down instead of in the head, have it come all the way down into the body and into the ground and really invite it to take up space, almost like a mountain. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that kind of solid and stability. It's not just up in the head, right? It's like grounded and really solid and earthy. I like that. And I yeah. feel like I will use it in other moments when I get stuck up here. Yeah. To yeah. just like yeah. move it so, through. So just uh, acclimatize to that, inviting mind to root down, get really nice and big. Get into its mountain stance. And from this place, oh, it can handle those little puny things. As they come, as they emerge, it's rooted. It's in its mountain strength, its natural mount, mountain strength. It's nice, solid, practical, big base. So wherever the exploring takes you, mind is rooted in this mountain sensibility mm -hmm. and when you make different decisions you can collaborate with it to keep yourself safe to keep yourself solid to keep yourself stable yeah i'm i'm seeing like maslow's hierarchy of needs and like i've yeah. got this bottom yeah, which is exactly. moving the moving the mind there. Yes, um, but yes, 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 yes. So just agree. The right brain's flashed you the, something that the left brain can calibrate to, right? The Maslow's mm -hmm. hierarchy, and agree with it. Yes, we're getting our base here. Don't you worry, mind. We're gonna get, what, that was the word I was going to use was worry. Like it's not yeah. something to be worried about that. That can't be the, we're, we're not going to toss out safety mind. We're not going right. to ste steamroll ahead without being intricately in partnership with you. Mm -hmm. And, and we're going to do this as a team mind. Your great um, minds are, uh, great bureaucrats in a way administrators right so your futurist is up there at the top and and is able to see the big picture right and and it's just reassuring the mind we're not tossing you out here there's this in between needs to get built mind this middle right from where i am to where i want to go and don't you worry mind i value you i like your practicality i like your sorting out on the money side of things yes 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
getting all those base needs met and then progressing to actualization together and yes right. yes and yes to the the mountain strength and stability even though the actualization is kind of the mind in its own but i'm breaking away from the uh the formal model <laughs> yeah exactly you're, you're yeah. reframing it yeah yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that no longer are we doing that mind alone spinning its wheels we're actually the full picture here that mind's connected mind is rooted mm -hmm. in the world yeah great now let's see what unfolds that might be it but there might be some more I mean, I, it feels good. Like there's just this, I don't want to say a complete like wash away of the worry, but to be able to frame things in this way um, and to also let's, think let's about. Wel welcome, let's welcome the worry because worry, just like the mind, it's big love too. Underneath it's just love. So, so hello, worry. Hello, worry. You are welcome here. And I see that underneath the worry, underneath the, the mind trying to figure that all out and that kind of ongoing that takes a lot of energy underneath that is Maslow's hierarchy underneath is love right it's trying mm -hmm. to and it has um, kept you safe it's looked after you it's probably burnt you out and exhausted you a little bit in the process right yeah but it's kind of two pronged because there is this safety that I do know exists um, but that's also so let's invite, the worry tied to that. Underneath that worry is that big love. And let's invite that love instead of being kind of contracted underneath the worry. Invite it to see if it wants to get bigger or if it wants to unfold in some way. It's only it's been taken up a certain space. There's been a certain relationship here with the worry kind of dominating. And that's mm -hmm. understandable, but it kind of get, can get stuck in a rut. So just see if it's given an invitation to do something different, to move different or to expand or to root or to whatever it wants to do. What is its druthers? What's its desire? If it's been reminded that it can do things differently, it doesn't have to be contracted or underneath. I feel like, Looking back, like so many awesome opportunities have present them, presented themselves um, with roles that I've had in the past, uh, education, right? Acceptance into master's programs, PhD programs. Um, so with the worry, like, I'm not sure like I'm questioning its necessity because. Well, that's exactly what's happening here. You've done, you've done it a certain <laughs> way. And like you said, it's a double-edged sword. It, it helps you get things done and fit in and, and tasks and everything, but it's come with a price. So that's exactly what's on the table is here is like, hey, we could do this differently. Here's an extension to that love underneath worry to actually find a different place to expand to not be underneath worry, but maybe even rise up and get bigger. So worry is kind of like down at its ankles instead of dominating over doom and gloom. Yeah. Just go to that wherever you find that love or wherever you find that care underneath worry, it's like protecting you, right? So that's big care, love. It might be another word that you associate with that. But just go right to it and give it the extension. It has wisdom. So if it wants to change or move or do something, just say, what do you want to do? You have full permission to change this dynamic. 
I liked your use of rise up and yes, to the ones also, to rise. yeah, to rise and to also expand. Okay, beautiful. Um, so it's wish is our command. So yes, 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 rise up, rise, 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 and expand up above the worry, take up more space, just like the mind got to root. Now the love underneath the worry gets to go up and big. Yes, yes, yes. Like big arms opening up or something. Yeah. That heart just kind of radiating out up and above. The worry is still there, but it's in its right place, right? The love kind of gets up above there and expands and dominates that. And underneath it's rooted, right? So, oh, oops, the heart's got the, I <laughs> just don't, knock my glass. So much enthusiasm. <laughs> In fact, yeah. <laughs> my green juice wanted to be rooted. Okay, there we go. So just finding that within you, finding that rising and then also finding that rooting at the same time, rising and rooting, those are great movements. And when it, I think when it comes to the, the love itself of that's, I mean, this conversation has surrounded my career and my professional experiences. Like that's really what I'm seeking is just a position that I, I love to, to show up. Mm -hmm. Um, and that I'm creating environments for others to also love to show up. Exactly. So. And here's the love showing up, literally, right? Is it Right. The and love, love is really never like a foundation for me. Mm. Um, like I really connected with the authentic human connection, right? And authenticity. Mm -hmm. But love is never a word that comes to the forefront for me. Um, Usually, or is, it, or is it now? Yeah, I think it is now. Until now, yeah. <laughs> love, is coming, love is coming to the fore, right. Good. Because I'm much more head over heart yeah. all the time. Yeah, so now there's a little flip-flop that love moved up and head moved down, it grounded. Mm -hmm. And they're both together, right? So I've kind of attempted in my doodles here, right? We've got up above, we've got the love. I'll just make this pink or something. Let's see. Here, that love has gone up and expanded. It's all up in here. And then the mind is rooted. These are all just ways to kind of find the feeling place of this. It'll be there in your body and your somatic probably, right? That mountain thing that happened here where mind just got right down there into earth and became very mountainous and stable. And that's where you found that Maslow's. And then instead of a mind spinning up here, you've got a heart expanded standing yeah. on top of the Maslow's hierarchy, right? If we're to do this, this is a big old heart with her arms outreached inviting other people in so like this yeah totally okay so just feeling into that bowing to that uh, wisdom as the heart expanded and as the mind rooted gives you a different feeling place than your relationship is previously and what a wonderful reframe to accompany you as you go on to this next phase and it gives you a um uh, a litmus test right like it gives you like a feeling place in fact you even changed your words to i feel the last kind of statement you made instead of the i think was oh the i feel show oh I, yeah, yeah wow <laughs> yeah and that, I was saying, I think I lo a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then the <laughs> I feel came on. So now there's that balance, right? So the head and the heart. 
And the, now as you go about this exploring, pay attention to where's the love, right? Where's the care? Where's the feel? Just like you had with the Oscar Mayer, right? There's a great example of organizational culture that had heart to it, that had feel. Mm -hmm. And all the other stuff is good, right? All the mind stuff and all that stuff that you need that in an organizational culture. But for you, what's right for you is an organizational culture that has heart and that has authentic human connection. So as you go about exploring, that's your calibrating, right? As you're exploring, it's like, nope, that one's heady, 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 heady. Ooh, now I ha hit one that's got some heart. I got, there's some love here. That's a place that would be, feels. there you go. Woo, I just got goosebumps. Okay, it's about, <laughs> it's about the feels. Good, excellent. I'll put that up top. It's about the feels. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, there you go. I think you're there. Let's see if any aspect of your consciousness has anything else it wants to send your way. But I think that's a wonderful place to complete on is it's about the feels. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this was so cool. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I love the smile on your face. Yeah. 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 Feeling good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, good one. Good feel. Good closing quote. Feeling good. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, please. Good idea. Thank you. <laughs> Take that throughout the exploring. Okay, I'm going to stop our share. I'll do some coloring on that. And the, the map is not the territory, it's a pale comparison to what you cover, but it is a memory device in some way. So you'll have that as a, as a token of the time together and some reflection back to the mind, right? To reflect back to the mind, the things that you learned and came in contact with. But hopefully that feeling inside of you, that's been done, that work's been done. It's no longer the same as it was when you first came in. There's a different relationship to the mind being rooted and to the heart rising and being expanded. So that works inside of you. Give me a closing quote. Um, if you're able to access the le left brain here, anything you wanna say to uh, close out? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, well, as I said, this was just such a, a cool, experience of like visually processing my thoughts and allowing allowing my heart and emotion to override my mind yeah. which I don't think that that is often easily done and when you kind of see everything flowing on the screen, mm -hmm. it, it's just a different type of energy. It's almost that, you know, I'm transferring my thoughts to you, you're verbally responding, but then you're also like literally energetically responding by mm -hmm. making everything visual. Mm -hmm. So it's as if what I was saying was flowing through you onto the screen. That was a long quote. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the medium in between. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yes. And mirroring your own consciousness back to you. And so, so this is back to some of your initial questions too, the difference between graphic recording versus when you're using the visuals interactively. With you, we're doing it in a coaching, personal development, inquiry kind of situation. Um, there's lots of different ways you can use it. So there's, it's part of what's going on here is the, the certain modality, inquiry, consciousness work that I'm using with you, which would be different from some other processes. Um, uh, but yes, there's a, 
the interaction that happens with the visuals doing it this way as opposed to off to the side. When I, I have a fundamentals course for working visually and I call them the four animals. So there's studio work where you make all these perfect kind of design things for pushing information. There's graphic recording where you're off on the side like you saw taking the notes. And then there's this a process work, visual process work, whether it's with groups or it's with individuals. That's a different animal too, where it's getting much more interactive. And the mirroring effect, instead of it being off on the side where you're glancing occasionally, it's really front and center. And there's, um, you know, I'm really holding container and, and moving the process here, but I'm also using it as a reflection tool, a mirroring tool of your own brilliance, yes. you know, back to you. And, um, you know, this is why I love working visually. Uh, I like it's it in so all the powerful. other animals, but I particularly love it with co coaching work, which I've done for years. And now with this consciousness work, that's been my leading edge. It's, it's really beautiful work. And, and I get taught every time I work with somebody, you know, cause each person's a sage onto themselves, their consciousness, right? If we meet it, we respect it. And then it shows us, right? You come with your certain dilemmas. We work with your consciousness and your consciousness shows us how, what's the solution to the present day dilemma, right? The crossroads and, and for you, it's about the feels. It's about the love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that you had such a great dream experience early on in your career, not making things wrong of what you did afterwards. Those are all very useful. They're going to hold you in good steed, but you need to pair up the heart again. You need to get the heart and the love and the feels back into the picture. That's where you're going to be satisfied, where it's not just going to be just suck it up and do my job, right? It's going to be like, I love being here. And, you know, right. and that's going to be really fulfilling for you and very fulfilling because you'll be in a leadership position with all the education and everything you have behind you, you're on that leadership track. And that's what we need in the world, right? All the stuff that's been happening with corporations, we've got a little off track here. Wonderful that we're in the left brain. We need that, but we need to balance it with the right, you know, the feminine mm -hmm. principle and the human beings and the authentic human connection and good companies have both and they exist. And they're so yes. needed more and more in the world and, and other companies are catching up and, with our current chaos and everything, I think in the bigger picture, it's good because the, the, the humanity is, is being brought back into things. We've gone astray as a civilization here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, wow. it's a pleasure to work with you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This was awesome. And I am going to continue to follow your work and, yeah. Please do. Please, please <laughs> it's do. It's going to take yeah. me a little while to like process. A, yeah. And yeah. 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 And, 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 and let's everything. just say to the mind, don't worry about it. Mind, body, and heart's got it. The feels know how to do the integration. The mind's going to be a little, what the heck just happened? <laughs> yeah. The mind just got, you know, kind of rearranged. So it's okay, sweet mind. It'll take a little bit. Take your time to calibrate and it's okay because it's not alone, right? It's got the heart to help. So yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'll see you around. Drop by a process group or you'll be on my yeah. list. So you'll see what's happening as things unfold with my stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a good weekend. I will. This year's is approaching <laughs> soon too. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. All bye right. for now. Thanks. Take good care. I'll be in touch.